Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jesse here, aka Whiskey Business, and today we're going to be reviewing a nice little single malt scotch here that we picked up recently. Never tried it, Aberfell D12. This is a Highland single malt, aged 12 years obviously, and uh... Comes in a little canister, nice black and gold coloring. The top doesn't really want to stay on properly, but you didn't buy it for the canister. I mean, some people do, so actually I can't say that. But um, we'll get this poured and we'll talk a little bit about it. So it's coming in at 40%. It's not, not, not what I like to see, but you know, it's one of the more readily available single malts, uh, especially at a budget price. Um, and especially here in Ontario. Jesus. Why is it not ripping on the perforation? What is going on here? Jesus. Yeah, so here in Ontario, where we have to buy from the LCBO. Let's listen to the pop. Sexy. This is number 2905. I'm not sure if these are batched, but uh, $66.20 for a 700 mil. So that is definitely a budget scotch, a uh, budget single malt at that. Now on the back here, it says they were awarded 24 gold medals. Um, 2005, 2007, 2012, um, all in different places, doesn't really matter where, let's just say they've won, they've won enough awards, you've probably heard of them, um, before I read the back of the canister here, let's get, do we get a second, nice, that's beautiful, that's the cork if you want to see it. Just some gold and black. It's a gold. Uh, it looks like a pot still, maybe. That or a bong with a bowl of weed. I'm really not sure. It's a wood top real cork. So, always nice to see. I like the real cork. But uh, as that chills there... Let's just get into the back, which I would imagine is the same. Mm, it doesn't look the same. Anyways, back the canister says, Our handsome distillery is sited on the River Tay in central highlands of Scotland. A stone's throw from the birthplace of our founder and pioneer of blending, John Dewar. Which, if you didn't know, this is one of the many um, scotches that get put into Dewar's white label. Uh, there's around fifty, or there's around 40 to 50 other scotches that make up Dewar's white label, but this is one of the bases for it, so if you didn't know that. Um, but yeah, John Dewar, uh, with land acquired from the Marquis of Breedlebane, Breedlebane, Breedlebane. That sounds pretty badass. And architecture designed by Charles Doig, the distillery rose up to be to begin production in 1894, in John's bonny hometown of Aberfeldy. His family found men who knew the secrets to superb whiskey. Today, we still use the time-honored techniques, long like long fermentation, to conjure rare honeyed notes. Honey is not that rare of a note, as far as I'm concerned. But, and draw water from the piddly burn renowned for its quality and promise of gold draw water from the piddly burn i'm not sure what that is is that a stream is that a lake i don't have to look that up uh mellowed for 12 years and handmade oak cast with smooth sweet dram offers rich rewards for those who like to dig deeper we lose a fair bit to the angels though almost a third of every cask has disappeared into the ether before ready to bottle that's crazy to think whole third i mean up in here up here in canada it's pretty bad I mean, that's why you can't age stuff as long even though there is a lot of that uh, the site of our distillery was chosen for its supply of good water and the railway that linked it to Perth. And then it has a little picture of the buggy engine. Uh, brought barley from our malt... Oh, the, the buggy engine brought barley from our maltings and oak for our coopers before conducting the precious golden liquid to market. What? Before conducting the precious golden liquid to market. The puggy engine resides at the distillery to this day. Oh, it's kind of cool. I guess they're all about history and stuff like that, which is, is pretty cool. And then this had the pool of water... The pool of the water god. The burn is the source of the distillery's water. Pure and fresh, the burn is known to contain deposits of 
alluvial gold. So I guess, you know, it, I guess it's a stream. It looks like a stream. On the oh, they got access to the railway and they got their own water source, which, I mean, makes them very unique as far as no one else is using that stream of water, I would imagine. We lose our fair share to the angels and it shows like a third of it gone. Lots of uh, imagery and, and uh, documentation wording on the actual canister, which is pretty cool. And then the bottle itself says Scottish alchemy. Turning water, barley, and yeast into liquid gold is simpler th simpler when the stream tumbling rewards you. What? Turning water, barley, and yeast into liquid gold is simpler when the stream tumbling towards you contains that precious metal. Built on land famous for deposits of gold, our distillery has welcomed travelers to taste its treasure since 1898. Okay, so that's why they keep referencing gold, blah, 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 blah. Because the stream they use for their water supposedly has deposits of gold. That's not going to change anything, let's be honest. But, I mean, you got a nice golden, uh, golden color. But I do imagine that they use coloring in this. Um, it is chill filtered. But I would imagine they, they use the E150, so... Nice and floral. I'm getting a little bit of uh, smoke in the back end or the background there but definitely really floral cinnamon vanilla maybe a little bit of orange citrus definitely the malt malt's not um uh, super strong Ooh, toffee mm, oh. Mm. oh it's like a granola bar is it honey i think it's honey it's like honey and oat something nature valley granola bar maybe oh wow that's nice that's like all i can think of now when i smell it the cinnamon the honey the oat the granola <sighs> yum that's very nice and then you get the smoke smoke just in the background the orange citrus is it's right there at the front. It's very almost, um, it's almost hidden by the rest of it because it's so faint, but it's there. It's really nice. That smells really nice. Um, so yeah, like I said, bottled at 50, uh, 50%, bottled at 40%. So it low as can go. Not my favorite. I find, uh, the higher up you go, the more flavors and the more depth it's going to have. And I feel like 40% just kind of, um, always lacks a, a little bit of the flavor but i mean obviously as you can see they lose a third of it so they gotta they gotta make their money here and being as budget as it is it's fair it's reasonable of course you know you got the glen livid the glen fiddick 40 percent and it's it's 10 bucks more maybe 15 bucks more than that where i live so yeah this is nice all right well let's go in for uh first sip Cheers. Wow, lots of dried fruit. Um, almost like trail mix with dried apricots and raisins and um, mm, what else? Cranberries, maybe. Just dried fruit in general. Mm, it's sweet that malt comes in sweet malt there's a bit of a bit of peat on the back end for sure uh the, the finish is kind of just like an oaky peat but not not super strong um you still get a bit of the sweetness into the finish it's like i would say it's like a honey sweetness mm, and i guess that's what they're talking about with their uh long fermentation to bring out that honey note which they claim to be rare like i said it i i'm not that into scotch but as far as other whiskeys go it's not it's not the rarest thing you know it's silky smooth like it it's almost creamy 
on the palette. You know, it's... I'm still getting that, that grainy oat, um, like I said, the granola bar. But it's creamy. I'm getting some... The dried fruit, I think, is actually... I'm getting peaches. And right now, now that I'm saying all this together, peaches and cream oatmeal. Peaches and cream oatmeal. I'm getting the peach on the nose now. Mmm. I... I mean, for 40%, that is a damn fine dram, I will say that. I really do like that. The peaches and the creaminess, wow. The mouthfeel is, like, very mouthwatering. It's got a little bit of mouth coating. I'm actually surprised for 40%. It's got more mouth coating than I would have expected. You can see the legs on it. It's, it's decently oily. It's not, I wouldn't call it thick by any means, but it'll coat your mouth and get you salivating, that's for sure. Mm. Um, so the finish, it's just kind of honey, oat, or not oat, oak, honey, oak, and that peaches and peat just, just kind of linger on for a good, a good uh, amount of time there. It's, it's very surprising. Like I said, it's 40%. It's still going. I still got that peat, still got that oak spice in the throat. There's a bit of cinnamon in there too, um, on the palate and into the finish. Mm. You know what? The dried, the dried fruit that I was getting, which is now turns out to be peach. I think it's peach and dried ginger. I'm getting like dried ginger chunks also in there. Um, which has a way different taste than fresh ginger and, and even ground ginger. Usually the ginger chunks you'll find at the store in a trail mix are sweetened. Unfortunately, I hate it. Uh, you can find them without, but typically where I live in Canada, they're always sweetened. Most dried fruits are, but it does taste like a, a sweetened dried ginger, um, which is very nice. I love ginger uh, and it totally complements the cinnamon and the oak spice. I think they all go together really nice and they add this um this uh sort of a, a burn that you would expect from a higher abv um so i want to say it's like an artificial uh burn alcohol burn but it's really just the spice and it's not like a spicy hot pepper spice uh but it, it's a nice heat okay like so if you've ever had uh a real ginger beer with the nice heat in there um, not ginger ale so much that has it too but more of like a real ginger beer with the heat that's that's what I'm getting off of this and so peaches and cream if I had to nail this thing down to three three things on the nose I'm gonna give it granola bar granola bar peaches and peat. And then on the palette, I'm going to give it peaches and cream, dried ginger, and um, peat smoke. Into the finish, dried ginger, peat smoke, and honey. Um, I'm going to rate the nose. The nose is pretty good. Uh, ABV considered. Let's go 86 on the nose, honestly. I, I really enjoy that nose. It's very nice. We're going to add a few drops of water here. See how that does. I don't typically add water to a 50%. Or, a, I keep saying 50, a 40%. But, you know, uh, it's opened up my eyes to a lot of different whiskeys. Adding water, because if you didn't know, a lot of the uh, Scotch distilleries will actually proof it down to around 20% ABV, maybe even lower, to taste it and make sure the blend tastes good and make sure all the flavors are, are there that they want. And uh, yeah, so it's opened my eyes up to that. But on the palate, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this an 86 as well. It's straight peaches and cream oatmeal. If you've ever had the instant peaches and cream, which is definitely one of my favorite uh, instant oatmeals. I don't eat instant oatmeal anymore, but as a kid, that stuff slapped. So... 
um, peaches and cream all day on the palate, and I really enjoy that. And I think if, if anything is unique about this, it's peaches. I don't get peaches very much in other whiskeys. So they're talking about their, their unique honey. I think that peach is pretty unique. Um, and again, it's creamy. It's, uh, it's, you know, there's no other way to put it. It's, it's creamy. You know, some whiskeys are just creamy like that. It's very good. Um, and then the finish, it lingers on for, for a decent amount for 40%. And it's got some layers to it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this an 81 on the finish. I think overall, it's you can't, you can't hate this. I mean, for the price, you can't hate it. And you know what? That water... That water did not did not hurt it at all. Mm. That water really brought out the sweetness in the peaches. Now it, it lost a little bit of that creaminess and that mouthfeel, but it's definitely more like a, a sweet peach tea now. A uh, honey honey sweetened peach tea, let's say. Um, so yeah, still good though. I don't hate it and it's still got a decent finish i like it overall i'd buy this um i'm gonna give this an overall rating of 84 i think it's really good and actually you know what we'll go 85 bump it up to 85 make it even i think this deserves a, a spot on your shelf especially if you're new to this i heard some some bad things i heard some good things i really enjoy it um i'm just getting into scotch but still I think you'd enjoy it too. Uh, the peach is definitely pretty unique to me. Um, so anyways, if you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other reviews down below. They were in a uh, playlist, um, whiskey specific playlist. So if you want to look for scotch, go to the scotch playlist and etc. You know, um, definitely leave a like. I really appreciate it and uh, helps me grow, helps the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment as well. That also always helps if you've ever had Aberfeldy 12 let me know what you think of it there's also an Al Aberfeldy I think it's 21 year I've actually heard that the 12 uh, sits sits higher up than that the 21 it, it's not as good apparently but let me know if you've ever tried it um, I would be interested because I really do like this so uh, yeah like I said I don't I don't they probably don't have that at the LCBO so if there's any recommendations you have for budget scotches um, that are sold at the LCBO, I would love to hear those down below. And until then, take care, guys. Stay safe and keep sipping. This has been Whiskey Business, and I'm out. Cheers. I got no, I got no sip left.